During the scorching summer of 1862, the union of Ludwig IV of Hesse and the young Princess Alice took place. Alice, whose mother was the renowned Queen Victoria of England, had only mourned her father, Prince Albert, for seven months before this event. Nevertheless, despite this period of mourning, the aristocratic maiden received a quite respectable dowry befitting her status. This included opulent treasures, notably exquisite jewellery in the Gothic style, a precious parure adorned with celestial sapphires and enchanting emeralds. Truly regal in nature, this choker necklace, majestic brooch and tiara graced their family vault. However, an unforeseen event occurred in November of 1937. Cecilia and Eleonora of Hesse and by Rhine, alongside Duke Georg Donatus and their heirs Alexander and Ludwig, were en route to a family wedding celebration. Sadly, their aircraft met with tragedy, resulting in the loss of the entire aforementioned family, including the spouse of the Duke, Cecilia, who was expecting a child and was preparing to present her husband with the newborn in a month's time. Since then, the jewellery collection has vanished into obscurity, with its whereabouts remaining unknown. Let us now rewind to the year 1906, when Grand Duke Ernest presented his second wife, the beauty Eleanor, with a marvellous Art Nouveau-style tiara. Translucent diamonds, vibrant turquoise and golden blue moonstone were fashioned into a sleek geometric pattern, a pinnacle of ultra-modern elegance in those times. The reverse side of the tiara showcased an interweaving of enamel ribbons in white and cornflower blue hues. Interestingly, the current owners of the adornment remain unknown, although the headpiece remains within the Hessian treasury. Speculation abounds that the exquisite treasure belongs to the wife of the third Baron Geddes, who is a direct nephew of Margaret of Hesse. The luxurious aquamarine parure crafted by Carl Fabergé was traditionally associated with the adornments of Grand Duchess Elizabeth Fyodorovna. However, the set formerly belonged to the lineage of the Dukes of Hesse, as evidenced in photographs depicting Victoria Melita, resplendent in the fairy tale tiara, necklace, earrings, and wristlet. The earrings, adorned with shimmering aquamarines, were crafted slightly later than other components of the parure. The bracelet comprises six cushion-cut aquamarines, each linked by sparkling diamond knots. The necklace exudes sheer magnificence, rectangular aquamarines forming a radiant garland encircled by the purest diamonds. It is known that Alexandra Fyodorovna bequeathed this treasure to her brother Ernst Ludwig, who in turn passed the jewellery as an inheritance to his younger son, also named Ludwig. The latter presented the parure as a gift to Dorothy of Hesse when his relative was marrying. The mentioned owner decided to put the set under the hammer at the prestigious Sotheby's auction in 1996. Presumably the aristocrat was in need of finances. Regardless, it is truly regrettable that such exquisite beauty departed from the lineage of the Hessian rulers and now belongs to an entirely different proprietor. However, this set did not make it onto the list of cursed items, unlike our next heroine's elegant tiara, the so-called strawberry leaf tiara, of the Dukes of Hesse. According to family law, it always brought nothing but misfortune to its owners. The diamond charm holds some sort of magical significance, dating back to the mid-19th century. Since then, the Hessian diadem depicting strawberry leaves has been dubbed Phantom, and for good reason. So, the daughter of Queen Victoria of England and Prince Albert, the young Princess Alice, was poised to become a happy bride, and later, a wife. Her caring and loving father commissioned a marvellous wedding gift for the girl from the jewellers at Garrod, that very festive crown symbolising the tenderness and sweetness of strawberry berries. It was with such juicy and fragrant berries that the dear bride was compared back then. Naturally, on the wedding day, the princess adorned her hairstyle with her father's gift. The majestic, delicate tiara complemented her bridal attire perfectly and the large drops of translucent diamonds depicting branches and leaves shimmered and glowed with some fiery intensity. But the young wife of Louis of Hesse never got to thank her father at the wedding ceremony. Just as he received the desired order from the jewelers, Albert passed away on the eve of the celebration. He never saw Alice getting married. Grieving for her prematurely departed parent, Alice and her husband embarked on a new phase of their lives. Now they were spouses, rejoicing in the arrival of long-awaited children bestowed upon them by heaven. Of course, 
the diamond ornament served as a reminder of her father to the princess. She often wore the sparkling tiara and admired herself in the large mirrors for a long time. Moreover, the precious tiara was perfectly suited for festive occasions. Life went on its course until the children of the Hessian couple fell ill with the insidious disease, diphtheria. Given the level of medicine in the 19th century, the outcome of the illness could be unpredictable. Alice contracted the dangerous diphtheria having been infected by her loved ones, and she succumbed to the dreadful illness. She was only 35. Yes, the devoted mother, the princess, did not wish to leave her children and tenderly cared for her daughters. Surely she had no regrets. Morning descended upon their home like eternal black twilight. The Hessian tiara still calmly glittered with magnificent diamonds nestled in its velvet box. And a few days after the mother's death, her youngest daughter departed to the otherworldly realm. The Duke's meaning of life remained his remaining children. However, fate did not spare them, merely postponing a series of ominous circumstances in time. As we know, soon the Russian Empire was engulfed in the dreadful flames of the October Revolution. The sisters, Empress Alexandra Fyodorovna and Grand Duchess Elizabeth Fyodorovna, perished at the hands of the Bolsheviks in that relentless revolutionary inferno. And Princess Alice's son, Friedrich of Hesse, inherited the family ailment, the incurable blood disease, haemophilia. It eventually claimed his fragile health. But what of the tiara? Was it lost? Not at all. The precious heirloom was passed down through inheritance. The strawberry crown came into the possession of Prince Ernst, marrying his own cousin, Victoria Melita of Edinburgh, a descendant of Queen Victoria. The prince became a happy father, but not for long. The firstborn perished in the mother's womb, and the second child fell victim to the cunning typhus. The spouses could not withstand the trials and divorced instead of supporting each other. As is customary, Ernst remarried. The fateful tiara was inherited by his son, born of his second wife. The second spouse, the beauty Eleanor, adored wearing the diamond crown. But in her life, everything was fine. Until the moment the wonderful tiara found its way into the jewel box of Prince Philip's sister, the young lady married the son of Eleanor and Ernst. Cecilia gifted George three children, and she also loved wearing the strawberry leaf tiara. The young princess was expecting her fourth child when she and her entire family embarked on their final journey, their last flight. The plane crash claimed the lives of almost all members of Cecilia's family. Only her daughter did not fly with her parents at that time and thus survived. By the way, the ominous tiara, which the princess took with her, did not perish in the catastrophe. It was securely hidden in a safe and it remained unscathed among the multitude of shards. Since then, the Hessian tiara has been dubbed cursed, bringing misfortune, phantom-like. For all who had dealings with the family, heirloom became ghosts and departed earthly abodes. Since the aviation disaster, no one has seen the strawberry leaf adornment. Perhaps Queen Elizabeth herself ordered to rid herself of the ominous trinket, and even a buyer was found, a fearless skeptic who does not believe in the myth of the tiara's curse. Be that as it may, since then, the English queen has been at peace. Nothing threatened her children and grandchildren anymore. Do you believe in mysticism? Write in the comments.